Hey guys, this is Tony, and uh, this is going to be lesson six on module. Um, so, what inspired this, I'm going to create a project here called Guest Number um, Application Settings Empty Project, is there was a letter sent to me this morning, um, which I thought was really an interesting uh, sort of problem, and I thought I would do a video on it tonight. Um, so let me first show you that message. Right guys, and here's his question, you can pause the video and read it, but here's the gist of it. Basically he wants to know how you would build a piece of code that would uh, pick a random number between 1 and 100, uh, where, where you pick a random number between 1 and 100 and the computer tries to guess it for you. Um, but before we can learn this, uh, let me just flush out this project so it's actually usable. Right guys, so at this point I've laid out a basic structure for how this code should go. Um, I have an input value, a low and a high value, and a found value. High, uh, the, or a lower value, a higher value, and a low value. So these would be the three, because you're going to want to get the computer to guess between 1 and 10, and then you're going to want to get the, uh, you're going to want to tell the computer whether it's, high, uh, if it needs to go lower or higher. Um, so right, but the first thing we need to know is how does the computer guess a number? So there, we're going to need to find the range between two numbers. So we're going to have a high value and we're going to have a low value and we're going to minus those and that's going to give us our range. So we're going to have a variable in here called int range is equal to high value minus low value. And then we're going to want to do uh, int random number is equal to um, ran bracket bracket mod range minus or plus the low value. Okay, so okay, so there's a lot of stuff to explain right here. So um, let's first start with ran. So what is ran? So basically the way the computer works is it has this giant list of numbers. Um, shoot, I thought I had copied the RAND function up here. It has this giant list of, uh, of numbers. And this giant list of numbers is a table that it calls RAN. And so this here, this RAN bracket bracket is a function call. We're going to get into functions a little bit later. So for now, just understand what what this does is it gives you back a random number between any huge number. Like it could be pretty much anything. It just has basically Windows just has this huge table of numbers and it picks one of those numbers. But the thing is that number is set. So what happens is right. So I just want to take a second so I could write this print statement here. So this X here. So if we run this uh, executables already open. So if we run this we're gonna get 41 and you know what if we run it again we're gonna get 41 and we run it again we're gonna get 41 this is because that number in that that giant list of numbers that the that the that the computer has always starts in the same spot so what you have to do is call another function and I uh, functions are gonna be confusing right now because we haven't went over them but we need it to get random numbers so really I'm kind of taking this lesson out of step I really should have taught uh, should have taught uh, functions before I taught ran but like random numbers but uh, I wanted to answer this question because I thought it was really interesting so we got this s ran function and functions take variables again I'll explain this later but for now understand but by doing this line of code here that you don't you may not fully understand we're seeding the table with time so what this means is that giant table list whatever you want to call it of numbers that that the computer has in the background when you call sran with time it uses time to uh, pick where it starts in that giant list and because this time is the time on your computer that time's constantly changing so it'll never be the same random number uh, unless you start well it'll be this it can be the same random number but it won't be consistently the same random number uh, like you can't guarantee it's going to be the same random number unless you start your computer at the exact second or you start the application at the exact se second you did the day before um, so there you can see it's a rather large number uh, if we run it again we get another rather large number 
so there you got two random numbers you close this different two random numbers different two random numbers so yeah every time you call ran it'll be different so now now that we've seeded it with time okay so we've got random working to a degree like a computer can't really do ran that's why it's, this is just a giant list and you see this the, that where it starts in that list of numbers with time because computer can't do random it's impossible for a computer to do random it just it's a sequen sequential machine it can't just pick random it's just something a computer is incapable of doing um, so random is always pseudo random it's just sort of like a giant list and then you seed it at the, that list to start at a random place and then just start using those numbers so what is this mod operator then actually I shouldn't have took this stuff away so soon so when we take X right when when like it well if we take random we mod it by a number so if we take it and mod it by like two it'll either be zero or one because what modding does is modding gives you the remainder of a division. So what does that mean? So that means if I have like 11 and I mod it by 2, that means that that'll go into it to 11 five times and leave one left over. So let's say 3. 3 would go into 11 three times, giving you 9. 11 minus 9 is 2, so there'd be 2 left over. But no matter what pick number you pick, it'll either go into it evenly. So you can go like um, 9 would give you 0 remainder because it goes into it evenly. Uh, 10, you would have 1 remainder. And 11, you would have 2 remainder. Correct? But as soon as you go to 12, then that goes into that evenly, you're going to get 0. Uh, 13, you're going to get 1. Uh, and 14 you're gonna get 2 and then as soon as you go to the next one as soon as you go to 15 it's gonna go back to 0 so on and so forth so any random number that we pick if we mod that by 2 we're either gonna get 0 1 if we mod it by 3 we're gonna get 0 1 2 if we mod it by 4 we're gonna get a number between 0 and 3 if we mod it by 5 we're gonna get a number between 0 and 4 and so that's how you kind of do like random within a range. But the thing is that only works starting from zero. So what you have to do is you have to add that. So if I wanted it to be like from one to five, we would get mod by five, which would give us zero to four and then add one to that would give us one to five. Okay, so then what, so let me just take a moment and explain this in Minecraft. Okay guys, so now we're in Minecraft. So this is just a couple lines and I want to show what happens if we sort of visually look at division. So if we're dividing this row by 2, that means we take away 2 in chunks. So that's 1 chunk of 2, 2 chunks of 2, 3 chunks of 2, 4 chunks of 2, 5 chunks of 2. This leaves one block left over because we can only remove things in chunks. So if we were to have mod that by 2, the answer would have been 1. Whereas if we were to divide this one by 2, we get 1, or mod this by 2. Well, if you divide it by 2, you'd get 3 at this point. Um, another chunk of 2 is 4. Another chunk of 2 is 5. Another chunk of 2 is 6. But there's no blocks left over. So this would actually, a mod of that, uh, of what was 12, 12 mod it by 2, would give you 0. Let's try 3. So if we were to, to mod this by 3, you'd take away chunks of 3. So that's one chunk of three, two chunks of three, and three chunks of three, leaving one left over. So if you mod that, which was 10, by three, you get one remainder. And if we mod this one by three, four chunks of three and one remainder. And so if this had been one longer, you would have got two remainder. And if it had been another two longer than it would, you would have gotten zero remainder. Um, I hope this makes sense. If it doesn't, let me know and I'll explain it again. Uh, anyways, back to the code. Okay, so I only got five minutes to finish this up. I hope the Minecraft illustration helped uh, make this more clear. 
So after we've done that, now based on that range idea though, we can do that, what we're doing here is the high value minus the low value. So if the high value is 11 minus the low value, which is one, this is range is gonna be 10. So ran mod it by 10, whatever ran is, we'll get a number between zero and nine plus low value is gonna give us, we should really put brackets around this so that it's more clear. Uh, it's gonna give us uh, between, uh, so that number, uh, if it's zero, it'd be one, if it's two, it'd be three, like whatever the number gives out between zero and nine would now be added by the low value, which is, so with this range thing though, is that if the numbers were something like um, six and four, so if you had six minus four, right? you're gonna end up with a range of two. So you're gonna get zero or one, and then add the low value, which would be four, you'd end up with anything between four and six. I hope that makes sense. Um, right, and so um, I feel like I may have messed up the math on that, but okay, moving on. So based on that, then what we can do is we can say, uh, we can well let me give you one second here okay guys there is one thing I forgot to mention for this project we have to include time.h because that's where this time functions coming from so if we don't include time.h it will say it doesn't know what time is it'll say time is unincluded should have mentioned that way earlier my bad um, moving on though so I added the C in input so we can get the input check if input is equal to lower lower is one higher is two found is zero so so on as we see in the callout one lower to higher found start again and so what found start again should do is it should set guessing number um, to uh, false so it'll get so outside of this while loop and then once it gets outside of this while loop this being the end of the while loop inside here we have the game loop and the guessing number loop once it's finished guessing a number it should set guessing number to true so on the next loop it'll get back into that uh, the guessing number while loop and then it should reset uh, high value and low value um, alt hold alt while selecting and you can kinda grab things like uh, in a box almost it's helpful when you wanna grab like this right so I want I don't wanna grab the int or anything I just wanna hold alt here and drag and then I'll just grab that section very helpful um, so this would reset the values for starting over so what is it gonna do when it's lower so if the number is lower so we know that with the number we just uh, checked is the highest value because say if we the number we are picked is five and then it shows seven then we know it's not high seven or higher so it must be lower than that so the new high value uh, will become whatever that random number if it's lower and then if uh, the lower okay so now um, I messed up the math a little bit here guys I it should be lower value is equal to random number um, I think I put in like higher value is equal to the lower number plus one or something weird so um, and I forgot the new line statement on the end of the print but anyways moving right along um, so is my number one I'm gonna say my number is six so I'm gonna say higher so it's gonna go two to eleven is it four nope higher so is it five to eleven is it ten nope lower so it's now guessing oh there's six that's my number zero you found it um, so let's say my number is uh, 9, so that would be higher than 5. 6, nope, higher, 7, nope, 9, there it is, found it. So play with this, uh, Keep change the numbers around, change the range, see what happens. The only thing to be aware of is that you, if you range, if high value and low value are ever equal, it'll give you 0 and your range will be 0. If you mod by 0, you'll get a runtime error, so there really should be an if statement here. So uh, range. Uh, is equal to zero say restarting and set guessing number to false so it'll get out of this loop else this else statement means basically if this wasn't uh, executed then execute this by default and I also used else if statements down here this means if this failed then do this the else statement isn't too complicated I'll probably go over them a little more because I don't think that's going to be a great enough detail for you guys to understand but I'm running out of time so I have to end this video but um, I'm going to post this uh, this code in the description hopefully it'll fit and uh, you guys can play with it and just start to understand the other thing I would propose to you guys is can you now figure out how to make the opposite game can you make the computer choose a random number and you put in the number and get the computer to tell you whether it needs to go higher and lower 
can you guys do that application because it should be a lot easier because you just have to find one random number then you input numbers and the computer just compares it to his and tells you higher or lower so uh, anyways this is Tolhi signing out later guys